um, our last speaker is Dr. Marilyn Medwid. Dr. Medwid is a 1978 graduate of the University of Arizona School of Medicine. Her OBGYN res residency completed in 82 was at the Albert Einstein College of Medicine in New York City. She's a board certified OBGYN. She practiced in Phoenix from 82 to 1990 at Cigna and in Tucson practice at Thomas Davis. That's where my kids were born. Uh, 1990 to 1992, um, and Office of Gynecology um, at the UMC Banner in 1998 to 2021. She's here to talk to us about uh, women's reproductive care. Here's Mal Marilyn. Thank you. Um, I am old enough to remember before Roe and how important it was to me and to my community um, when Roe was enacted. I can still remember where I was the exact minute that I heard that. So it's a little devastating to me uh, that Dobbs has come into effect. I'm gonna start with um, the laws in Arizona as they stand now, maybe. And I say maybe because there are three different laws. Um, as of 9-24-22, which is only a few days from now, there is a law that states that there will be no abortions allowed after 15 weeks. The second uh, law is a 2021 fetal rights law that uh, does not allow abortions for fetal anomalies um, except for um, uh, non-viable fetuses. Uh, and that, that was blocked because it was too vague, vague by a federal judge. Um, how do you define whether something is fatal? Um, does it have to be fatal by the time of birth? Does it have to be fatal within a couple of days? Or does it allow for uh, uh, abortions that would prevent a set of parents from watching their child die over the first year of life. The third law, which is the most horrendous, was enacted in 1864, before uh, Arizona was a state. It, it bans all abortions except for the life of the mother. The present AG backs this law. The Republican candidate for AG backs the 1864 law. Uh, while the Democrat, Mays, uh, feels that all three are under dispute and should not be enforced at this time. The question is, what does the life of the mother mean? I can relate to this in several cases that I've taken care of. When I was a chief resident, I had a woman that had a ruptured 16-week pregnancy. And an ectopic pregnancy. As we were scrubbing to go in and do the case, the attending asked me, was there a fetal heart rate? And I looked at her and said, I don't give up. This woman is dying. Well, would I now have to worry that aborting this ectopic pregnancy that this woman was hemorrhaging from was against the law? There are cases of severe preeclampsia in 
what would be considered questionably viable, 20, 24, 26 weeks, where a woman's life is severely in danger. Would it mean that we would have to wait until she convulsed and had brain damage? Would that be enough to say that it was her life? What about her bleeding out from lack of blood clotting factors? Do I have to wait for that? At that time, the chances of her dying are very high. And there are lawyers now in ERs advising doctors on whether or not they can complete miscarriages because of these laws in the surrounding states. Hasn't, well actually, most of the states surrounding us, thank God, are allowing abortion. But the southern states and Utah do not. There are women with severe heart disease that never should be pregnant. Do I have to wait until she goes into severe heart failure before I terminate this pregnancy? The life of the mother is not clear and legislators are practicing medicine without a license. They have no right to tell a doctor how to take care of a patient. In addition to this, I'm a firm believer in a woman's right to choose. I can remember, I can remember a woman sitting in my office after I told her she was pregnant and crying to me that she had been the head of right to life in her college. And she was realizing now that she had to have an abortion because it was not good for her at that time. Nobody has the right to tell you what is good for you until they've been in the situation. And the vast majority of our legislators are men and they can't be in this situation. It is really important that we vote down ballot. Too many people will go in and vote for president, senator, congressman, and leave our state legislators blank. We are very close to having a blue legislature. Only by a few legislators. Please encourage everybody to vote blue for their state legislators. The rights of women are truly on that ballot. In addition, of course, senators and congressmen are also uh, very important. I'm sure that most of you have already heard that Lindsey Graham has introduced a bill to make it illegal across this country to have abortions. I can't believe I'm still having to fight for this, but I am, and hopefully you will too. Thank you.